you want to feel like a pro gamer? Wait no more. Greatness awaits you with Intel Extreme Masters Certified PCs and Notebooks. When you see unique IEM certified stickers on the outside, you will find high-grade components with Intel Core i5 and Core i7 processors inside. Every purchase includes in-game content and supports the total prize purse of Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. Feel like a pro. We're back here Woo. at the Intel Extreme Masters uh, here in Gyeonggi, and I believe we are about to start this game. Yeah, cannot wait to finally get into it. Sorry for the delay there, guys. We're Hope that you've been teases. enjoying the uh, the B stream as well. That is going on, but we, we were certainly enjoying it on the break as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely a great match going on there. But maybe an even better one about to start here: stats versus innovation. We're gonna be taking a look at those guys in just a moment. But help us spread the word. Hashtag IEM. Let people know. Finally, we have the stream up and we are going. So taking a closer look at our two players, um, innovation versus stats, this is gonna be a fantastic match. Uh, we were saying earlier that innovation, I would probably all agree it's the favorite here, but stats mm. could certainly pull an upset. Oh, definitely. Like stats is in great shape right now. Uh, definitely one of the top three Protoss in the world. And I mean, there's arguments to be made that maybe he's the best Protoss in the world right now, but if he is, he has to get deep here and maybe win the tournament, something that he just hasn't been able to do yet. Now guys, don't forget, this is a new iteration of StarCraft II, so the meta, uh, it's gonna be like wet clay at this point in time. We're gonna see exactly what direction the very best of the best players think this game has mm. to go if you wanna win. Yeah, and uh, I tell you, this is it, StarCraft II is getting to such a cool place where we have these pros that have been high-level pros for a long time and are really cementing their spot. Like, yeah, Innovation maybe didn't have the absolute best 2016, but it was still good. And here he is in top form once again, maybe the favorite to take down the whole tournament. He looks like he's in some kind of kung fu pose here or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like his third fighting stance. This is the story. You have to hit maneuver. all the kick buttons and he goes like this and, you know, he does all his different moves. Uh, he's um, a much better character than Jen, but... Uh, <laughs> much better. Um, so it looks like our game is ready. So let's get this going. This is game number one, stats versus innovation, here at the Intel Extreme Masters, Gyeonggi. Aha, we tricked you. We are such <laughs> teases here. Um, we'll be getting our game going in just a moment. It's loading up a little bit uh, slower than we expected, uh, but we will be in this in a second. Uh, it is going to be a best of three, and we really couldn't ask for two better players to start this uh, this tournament off with. No, certainly. This is the group of death that we are starting with, and uh, that means that it should be the most exciting. It's hard to say who will come out. Maybe these two guys that we're about to watch. Okay, we're in game, yes! Oh my god. In the bottom right, in the red, he is Stats! And his opponent here in the upper left, in the blue, he is Innovation. All right. Can I, can I say how, uh, you know, normally when I, uh, I cast the Artosis, we have headsets on. Yeah. So it kind of, it, it's a definitely a different feel, but now I just get to sit here and yell in your face. I know, you're really person. loud when I don't have a headset to block <laughs> I know. out. I know, I feel bad for you. To block out your sounds. Oh my God, it's crazy. But uh, 
Anyways, uh, Echo, we already talked a lot about this map and how it can be played. Uh, not sure exactly how they'll go about it. Will stats get a little bit aggressive in the early game? It is a possibility. Guys, get your notebooks out. Yeah. We're going to learn the new Korean meta. It's time to go Shrek the nerds after this on yeah. your respective yeah. servers. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been thinking a lot because we have been casting a lot of ASL as well, the StarCraft 1 tournament, and right. I've been just kind of thinking like about the legends of StarCraft 1 and how we're hitting that point in StarCraft 2 now where we truly have like the legends where it's like, will there ever be players better than this? And it, it's super cool because you know, RTS, it, it, the whole StarCraft franchise has basically been the longest stable franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, starting with, you know, StarCraft Vanilla into Brood War and then into every expansion and major patch we had, which is many more in StarCraft 2, obviously, than 1. But uh, you're completely right, Artosis. Uh, we're here in year six now. Is it yeah. six, six, six years, right? Yeah, six, six years, years of uh, StarCraft Two. That's right. So it's uh, six years. In now. fact, it's if you count the beta, which everyone got really active on, we're actually almost at seven years. It came out in like Maybe January, six or and February. A half. Was a beta out for like six months or something? It was out for a, uh, yeah, like six I think months it was six or so. Months, yeah. So uh, definitely, we are we are coming up quick on that. But you know when the StarCraft beta came out, it, uh, it Apollo came out, was sleeping in my uh, in my house. Really? Yeah. It, it came funny. out, and that was sort of Paul and me were like, all right. And he had his computer in his corner of my house, and I had my computer in uh, my corner. I had a friend that worked at Blizzard text me the moment the beta went live. Oh, and it yeah. was like 3 a.m. or something in Korea. And I immediately <laughs> woke up and went back to my house and just like I remember played. this. I remember I woke up at 10, and like I saw a text from you at like 3 a.m., and you're like, the beta's out. Yeah. And I'm like, I wake up and I'm like, Ugh! Like, no shower then, I gotta run to my computer. I, I played, I believe it, it was 72 or 73 games in the first day. Yeah. It was like, I just, I was like, <laughs> yep, I've been waiting for this since about 2004, guys. And we're all, we're all using the builds that are basically now completely bad or oh, obsolete, yeah. but it's like, it's well, trash. I don't know what to do, guys. We gotta. And of course, we did that first GSL season yeah. where it was all the Terrans going two racks, Marine Marauder, and then Stimming and hoping they missed oh, the force field. But good we've times. come a long way. But with this game now being out for six years, we're now in a new iteration. It's super cool, you know, to, to point out that we're at that point where there's been so many good players, uh, the rise and fall of different legends out here, mm -hmm. that, yeah, it, it, can we ever get players that are going to be better than this? Yeah, well, the thing is, like, these guys aren't going away anytime soon, right? And I, I look at this, and, by the way, this is as standard as you can really get. The standard macro opener from stats going into Blink and Observers. From innovation, just a widow mine drop and some early marines. Yeah, this is very, very standard. But back to what I was saying about that, I look at these guys, and if they had equivalents from StarCraft One, I would say that innovation is maybe Flash, and uh, especially when you look stylistically speaking, how they're both monsters of macro. And I would say Stats is like a Stork type player. You know what I mean? Actually, I really like the Stork comparison. Flash, I, I see what you're saying. I feel I feel like he's like Diet Flash or something. Mm. Well, no flash one will zero, ever truly Cherry be flash. flash or something. Maybe. Cherry Flash. But, uh, <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's see how this uh, see how this Widow Mine drop does. It's coming in right now. We see the medevac boost burrowing here. Uh, probes very carefully pulled back. Two kills though. Uh, certainly Ooh. better than the minimum. And he does escape with one Widow Mine. So it doesn't do as much as he was hoping for, but uh, we see Innovation following up with a Siege Tank. I wouldn't be surprised if he even goes for two here. Uh, siege Tanks are so strong at the moment. In fact, he starts the second one immediately. Gonna continue to try to crash a little bit with that Widow Mine, see if he can maybe get a lucky shot off that gets some more probes. But uh, expect Innovation to, as Stim and Plus One finishes, possibly do a really strong push that'll really test stats. Is stats ready but, for this? By the way, I, I, I really like the way these guys both open because it's very safe. Mm -hmm. uh, innovation, you know, you do a Widow Mine drop. There's nothing truly insane about that. Yeah. You obviously don't want to lose the meta back and the Widow Mines in it. But, you know, it, it's very middle of the road. And I think that's smart because this, uh, we're still so fresh in this mm -hmm. patch for the game that yeah. you want to be ready for anything they might throw at you. Because if you can do a build that can kind of hold anything, mm -hmm. then you should be in a better position later on. But these guys both showing a lot of respect here. Uh, it looks like we should be going into a pretty awesome uh, late game yeah. coming up here as they're both just filling in all the holes in their tech tree and trying to get that balanced out army. Yeah, as long as no one really screws up when the first attack occurs, this should go into a longer macro game. Like already, Stats is playing this 
revival of the old style of going into Colossus very quickly on two bases. Uh, he is trying to do a little bit of harassment here with the Adepts. Not going to get a whole lot done, but uh, still, you know, it's at least giving him a little bit of intel and, and whittling down some units. And there's really no reason to not send that War Prism out there. As long as the Adepts are only losing shields, if you kill off a few Marines, then you're doing your job. Even mm -hmm. though a lot of times it seems like when you have a drop like that, it doesn't do that much. Yeah. Shaving off a little bit of Marines here and there. We all know that Terran armies with Stim, the fight can snowball really quickly if the Protoss starts to get short on units. So even though it's a, a little bit, that's a lot of times uh, can, you know, those inches can add into yeah. to miles later on when, when it comes down to the wire and they're in that or, big fight. Or for our non-American viewers, those centimeters can go into kilometers there you eventually go. over time. <laughs> <laughs> so that with our, with our American education, like in those centimeters can be kilograms, Artosis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How many gallons would you say? <laughs> How many uh. gallons to fill a yard, Artosis? <laughs> uh, so, um, we have the push coming out right now here from Innovation. He's coming over here to the center right side of that. We have the Stim now coming in. The oh. Immortal uh, in the front here uh, could be picked off if it is targeted down. And it, oh, nice control here by Stats. Actually, Mike right back. Both the Colossus and the uh, Immortal do finally go down after being badly bruised. The Siege Tank has been eliminated. It looks like overall Stats does come out ahead. And can he get this meta back? Yes, he does. Wow, very close hold, though. He lost a lot of his expensive tech units here, and Innovation continues to rally down, staying aggressive after this initial tank push. Oh, picks off that Widow Mine. That was so important. If that had gotten a shot, this battle could have gone the other way very quickly. Okay, so Stats does hold, but it's important to note what he did lose back there. He lost an uh, Immortal, an Immortal, excuse me, and a Colossus. Um, and that does reset the robo tech here. There's only one yep. robo currently producing, so anything from the robo is incrementing out. Whereas the Terran army, it can refill from uh, you know the multiple different mm -hmm. production facilities it has. So you're going to get uh, the factory units back out there, um, and obviously the Marines and the Marauders reloaded. So there's a chance for Innovation's army to be technically more complex later on here. Yeah, that's uh, definitely true. And he's actually going into Vikings rather quickly here, Tasteless, which I uh, definitely want to point out. Uh, Liberator coming up, trying to get a bit of harassment done. We'll pick off a couple Stalkers before going down. And of course, some harassment continuing from stats. But uh, the fact that Innovation is going right now immediately into these Vikings means that he might be able to take out all the splash damage in the form of Colossus from stats and possibly pick up a relatively quick victory if he's able to do that cleanly. Good job, by the way, um, on Innovation taking out that Warp Prism. Stats overextending just a little bit. He'll have to remake that Warp Prism, and just going back to the Robo units, the fact that he lost the Immortal Colossus, mm -hmm. to make another Warp Prism along with that yeah. is gonna be definitely a nuisance. He's, he's super taxed on that Robo, and in fact, something that he may want to do if he doesn't feel like he has the time or maybe the gas, to get into Psy Storm because, you know, you need a second set of Splash to do the Vikings, he might want to make some Disruptors, and that is more Robo build time. So, you know, this is, it's kind of a tough spot having lost those early tech units. Always a great move from Terran to pick them off early. Okay, Stalker's coming out now. He's going to try to go in for a little bit of a post. He's got to be careful. Some of these Stalkers uh, already bruised here. Mm. Uh, we do see Disruptors now coming yeah. into play as well. See, this is very much the most standard macro style for Protoss right now. You know, going into some Disruptors after the Colossus, because all the Terrans are just wrecking those very, very quickly with the Vikings. And if you don't have a secondary level of Splash, Marine Marauder Medevac Mine, 4M, as I like to call it, Tasteless. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that'll that bowl you over. <laughs> You're such a nerd, man. Uh, we, we, we actually, how dare you? Uh, how dare you indeed? You call me a nerd in this gaming stream? Uh, I, I want to point out on this map, my basic you bro, Tace, is calling me a nerd. You gonna give me a noogie later? <laughs> That's right, man. Give me you a swirly. Uh, this map has this rectangle in the middle. There's low ground in the center, but a lot of Terrans and Protosses will try to hold the high ground, like mm. you see innovation coming in uh, over here. Yeah, that's. Um, you're not gonna break that. No, no, it, it's 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 super annoying, and because of that, a lot of times players will try to rotate it either into like the lower left side or the upper right side. Uh, onto that uh, high ground area and push there, but that does mean that some uh, sometimes players can counterattack. Mm -hmm. TVP is not exactly the matchup that we think of when we say counterattack. Yeah. But there is some options to do that or to pick up from Medivacs and try to do sure. across. 
you, but, um, you can hit a base trade in a, a TVP. It yeah. doesn't happen as often. Normally, it's like a Zerg game. Like, a lot of times, like, if Zerg goes mutas, you'll see the Protoss and Zerg just kind of have the handshake that a base trade is going to occur. But right, right. It, it can happen here. Like, if someone gets out of position, that might be their best move. Okay, Disruptors are coming out here. Now, this is going to be a, a problem most definitely here for innovation is how does he push into this area? He doesn't have any way to directly confront the, disrupt, the disruptor yeah. balls unless stats were to miss control. Can't really count on oh. that. That's never a good way to play an RTS game. Look um, at how many Vikings he has. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, it's going to be a doubly problematic combo with the Liberators because yeah. the, the Colossi can't quite get in there. And it's not going to be easy to actually hit that ball. And we see the GTs Ooh. now coming up here along with a few of uh, this disruption balls. But one more coming in. Really good control here by innovation. Oh. Innovation now blinking up. He is continuing, or excuse me, stats rather blinking up as Innovation is stimming and microwave back. But I gotta say, Innovation's control has been very Perfect. impressive. Like, that was the most ridiculous control ever right there. He took almost no Colossus hits, erased them so quickly, literally ran back exact. I'm getting chills, exactly out of disrupt range. Like, a millimeter out of disruptor range, and then going back in as soon as the disruptor ball blows up. Crazily well done by Innovation, really showing why we're talking about him as probably the favorite of the tournament. Okay, Stimmy coming forward now. Looks like one Disruptor does go down, but meanwhile, a decent connection actually shaving off about three or four units there. The Warpins will continue stats, trying to apply pressure to this top center base here. Uh, in this map especially, you tend to start expanding uh, really close together, which causes a lot of fights here in the middle of the map. Okay, what is he going to be able to get done with those Liberators there? It doesn't feel like Stats is really going to be able to break this area. It's very tough, especially, I believe that's a planetary on the way. So even if he got through the Liberators, it's going to be hard. And oh man, DT's starting to harass. Yeah, really nicely done some of the DT's. Oh good, out positioning these Liberators. He comes in now. Innovation stimming back with his army is not entirely gripped up. Force field do go down. Limiting the interaction there. The Vikings really don't have any target at this point in time. The War Prism has been kept too far back. Oh, this is so well done by Stats to get in here and make something happen, but Innovation still has a giant amount of units that are spread quite well, and the Planetary has finished up here, dealing a lot of extra damage as well, but nothing to repair. It does go down. The majority of the army here for Stats is these tier 1 units, uh, the Sentry's Adept Stalkers, but it seems like he just has enough to to take this on, especially because these disruptors over here to connect with the remaining ground army. The Liberator's just not with enough underneath wow. him. GG! Stats wins in game number one. That was such a high level game from both sides. Like, Innovation had such a strong engagement in the middle of the map, but then got out of position for like one second when the DTs hit him. And bam, Stats blinks in, he takes out the Liberators, starts hitting the Planetary quite heavily, no SCVs left to repair it. Like, that was really, I feel like, his only window in to take that game down. Very nicely done there by Stats. The animation was doing a good job controlling, uh, especially early on when we saw that fight in that like diagonal rectangle. Yeah. Um, the, the rhombus. Di the rhombus. The diamond, if you will. Wait, no, a rhombus. No, it's not a rhombus. It was an equilateral yeah. quadrilateral. But a ro isn't a rhombus like it's not even a... It's like a diagonals, right? But it's... I don't know. Well, now we've learned Someone it. tweeted at us. At least I'm one right. of us does not know exactly what a rhombus is. One but of us has no idea about geometry. Yes. I once had a guinea pig or named rhombus. In, in don't you ever question <laughs> if I know my geometry. Or Joseph just looks at a, a base, he's like, that's shaped like rhombus, my guinea pig, but nobody has any context. <laughs> we are going to go into game number two right now.